right here, I have Scratch Jr. If you don't know what Scratch Jr. is, it's basically Scratch, but on your iPad for ages five to seven. I don't know how a seven-year-old can use this, but the biggest thing this is used for is like simple animations not really games right but i'm a game developer so i want to put scratch jr to the test and see if you can make a game in this weird app designed for literal children i'm a little bit older than seven you know i actually just turned eight but the game that i want to try and make is this the chrome dinosaur game if you don't know how it works you're basically a dinosaur and you jump over things i'm i'm really i'm really good at the game my finger my finger just slipped so yeah all right i'm gonna set a timer for one hour as soon as i press this button my time will start three two one okay 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 scratch jr this is scratch jr very very fancy software is there a way to full screen it oh god what i do let's go ahead and create a new project let me show you guys a bit of how scratch jr works basically you have similar to scratch you have a green flag and any blocks connected to this green flag will run when the game starts because this app is made for five to seven year olds there's actually no text, like next to no text, because people who use this app don't know how to read, which is kind of weird to think about, but everything has a little icon, so it's a little hard to figure out what everything does, but this thing can move the player. So yeah, it's kind of similar to Scratch, just less features, but I think the big things are here. There's four different ways that you can trigger code. You can run code on the start of the project with this green flag. You can run code when the sprite is tapped like that. If you click on the sprite, this code will run. You can run code on collision. So if something collides with this sprite, any blocks attached to this will run. And then last but not least, this is where it gets really interesting. You can send a message of one of these colors and then run code when that message is received, which allows you to sort of communicate between objects, right? So for this endless runner game, what we're going to do is start off by implementing the player controls, which is pretty simple. What you want to do is when the player is tapped in the movements, movements, you want to make him hop. So now when you click the player, the player should hop. All right, there we go. Now we need to make our dinosaur sprite. Scratch Jr. surprisingly has a pretty good image editor. Um, I think. Now let's make a dinosaur. Um, what does a dinosaur look like? Okay, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. And then you just want to fill the rest. There we go. This looks just like a dinosaur. It looks literally just like a dinosaur. <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah, it, 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 it's, a, it's a little questionable, but come on guys. This, is, this isn't that bad. Okay, now our dinosaur jumps. It's, it's definitely it's definitely a dinosaur. Okay, we have a jumping dinosaur, but there's nothing to jump over. So we need to make some hazards that move across the screen. Yeah, for now, as a placeholder, I will use this bat because I will bat you on the head if you don't subscribe. <laughs> okay, yeah, so when the game starts, the bat will move to the left, is repeated infinitely with this block. Now what we should do is replace this bat with some real art. Back to this beautiful drawing program. I need to get it I need to get it perfectly lined up or else my life is a failure. All right, it's fine. This this is good and then I'll like I'll make it a bit wider. Here we go. This this is definitely a cactus. Come on guys. Honestly, I should be an artist. Look at that. This is a beautiful game. Okay. Let's make a floor. I think the best way to do a floor would be to make it a background. I'm not sure exactly how this works. All right, honestly, this is pretty solid. For Scratch Jr., we have already made some pretty solid progress. Oh wait, we don't kill. I just realized we don't kill the player. The most important feature of the game I forgot to implement, which is killing the player when you need to be killed. In our player sprite on collision with anything, we reset the game. Right there, I think it reset and you can't even tell sometimes. Genius idea. We make an overlay and then we write. We have to write with um, just my handwriting because there's no text. Okay, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. That's that's not bad, guys, right? It's not, not that bad. So now when you die, I want to make this show up. Can you hide a sprite? Please tell me you can do that. Yes, hide. Oh, yes, let's go. On death. So on death is when you get the red message you show 
Oh my god, I'm so bad. Wait, oh, you, you, this is broke. This is okay. This is a little broken. It's a little. Whoa, whoa, chill, chill. Now, okay, now the game is like here, dude. We have we have the Chrome Dino game. Honestly, it's better than the original right now. I think now we have a very functional game, as you can tell. This game is a masterpiece, and we still have 18 minutes left. So I say we add some sound effects. So when you jump, you obviously want there to be a sound effect. All right, let's make a dinosaur jumping sound. This will be beautiful. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, shit. You can't play the sound effect like asynchronously. It plays the entire sound effect and then it continues. That's so bad. That's the worst thing I've ever heard. Ooh. Oh, both of the lines of code will run simultaneously if you have two receiving things. Ooh. There we go. Ooh. The other thing we need to do is make a sound effect for when you die. The beautiful noise of a dinosaur dying. <laughs> and then we drag it here and let's see how this works. <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> I should be a professional sound designer, honestly. Make music. Ooh, that's a good idea. We should add a background track to our game. Are you ready for the music industry to be revolutionized with a single song? A single production? I'm a dino on a mission. Can't stop now. I gotta keep on moving. Can't slow down. I see the obstacles ahead. They're coming fast. But I won't let them hold me back. I'll jump past. I'm a jumping dino. Never giving up. I'll jump over cacti. Never gonna stop. I'm a jumping dino, running through the wild. I'll jump over anything, I'm unstoppable, I'll fly. I see the cacti coming, sharp and tall, but I won't let them stop me, I'll jump them all. I'm moving faster now, I won't be denied. I'm a jumping dino, unstoppable, I'll fly. <laughs> I, I, I forgot, guys, I forgot to press record. It's okay, you can never hear this song enough. Okay, it's fine guys, it's fine. I'm a dino on a mission. Can't stop now. I gotta keep on moving. Can't slow down. I see the obstacles ahead. They're coming fast, but I won't let them hold me back. I'll jump past. I'm a jumping dino. Never giving up. I'll jump over a cacti. Never gonna stop. I'm a jumping dino. Running through the wild. I'll jump over anything. I'm unstoppable. I'll fly. I see the cacti coming. Sharp and tall, but I won't let them stop me. I'll jump them all. I'm moving faster now. I won't be denied. I'm a jumping dino. Unstoppable. I'll fly. I'm I'm a dino on a mission. It just loops again. Dude, imagine writing the best song of 2022, dude. This is gonna be on everyone's Spotify rap next year. Like top of everyone's listening is gonna be I'm a dino on a mission by Polly Mars. Snoop Dogg's career is dead. Yeah, I'm actually, I feel bad for Snoop Dogg. I feel like it was a little disrespectful of me to just hop on a track and just destroy him on my first try too. I think we proved today that you can make a game in Scratch Jr. Even if you're an absolute idiot.